Hey, what's up everybody? I am, it's been a while, but I am finally back with another video. So I've been working pretty hard for the last two or three months, uh, seven days a week, nonstop. So I haven't really had time to film a video. Uh, so I took the weekend off. I came down to Illesheim, Germany, uh, to visit some friends of mine from when I was in the military. And so I was really close to uh, Stork Barracks in Illesheim. It's Army Barracks. And uh, as where I did a video previously on my first duty station, I'm actually now doing a video from what was my last duty station when I was active duty. So I am on Stork Barracks in Illesheim, Germany. Stork Barracks was found, or built in 1936 and operated by the German Luftwaffe from 1936 to 1945. Uh, then the military took over around 1946 or 47, and it's been a U.S. military base ever since. Um, so there, you know, when I was stationed here, uh, 2006 to 2009, <clears throat> there were two Apache battalions. I was in, uh, originally it was 66 Cav, later 2nd of the 159th. There was also um, 26 Cav, which was later 3rd of the 159th. Uh, since then, the base is not an active duty uh, base anymore. It's used as uh, part of the support to ERI, European Reassurance Initiative, which started under the Obama administration, which is now EDI, the European Deterrence Initiative. If you want to know about, more about that, just Google uh, European Deterrence Initiative and you'll kind of understand how they do the rotations over here. So I just wanted to kind of uh, walk around base, see what it looks like today. And uh, I know a lot of people were uh, stationed here. Uh, I've seen on the Facebook pages and stuff. Uh, so this is another nostalgic video. And so uh, let's take a walk and see what Stork Barracks looks like today. Starting out right here in the middle of base, and I'm on one of the main pedestrian walkways. I'll spin around here and show you. So when I first was stationed here, I think I got here in either February or March 2006. This road right here, um, none of this, uh, the canopy area, none of this was here. This was actually the main road you drove through to get to base. <clears throat> a few years ago, they turned this strictly into a pedestrian zone, opened up the library here. Over here was a food court. Uh, and then this was the PX over here. The PX has been closed. Um, the last I knew, there was a pizza place in the food court, and I'm not sure if there's anything else left there. Uh, the library is pretty much, um, it offers services to the, the soldiers that are rotating through with the rotational brigade. Um, and in there, you can, not only is it a library, you have like uh, internet access and things like that as, as well. Turn around, let's see, a few years ago, they had completely remodeled the bank. Uh, I remember when I got here in 2006, the bank did not look anything like this. Um, I knew the former uh, bank uh, manager. He retired three or four years ago. He was a former, I think he was artillery, and I believe he told me he got out in 1979 and then, you know, married a local woman, uh, raised a family over here and just stayed. He retired two or three years ago, and he's actually still in the area. Um, let's see. Across from here, this tall building here, which they've been talking about tearing down for over a decade now. I used to spend a lot of time in here. <clears throat> um, so one of the few things to do out here uh, was play rugby. And I ended up playing rugby for about 19 years. So for the three or three and a half years I was stationed here at Stork Barracks, I actually played for the Ellisheim Black and Blue. And our clubhouse used to be on the second floor, or third floor, third floor maybe. Um, this is DPW in the bottom, the Department of Motor Works. They're the ones that do all the repairs and all that good stuff on base and, and kind of you know ma maintain, the, uh, maintain the concern or the base. So our rugby clubhouse a few years ago were moved as they condemned that building, I think, and the bank manager and a couple of the older players that are back here as civilians end up moving it right over here. So I'm gonna, I've actually never been in here, but I'll walk up here and we'll peek through the window. We're getting closer here. You can see Black and Blue Rugby Football Club established in 1981. This building used to be, I don't think it was the ACS, Army Community Service, maybe it was a YSU Sports, but it was commandeered a few years ago and now the rugby club is in here. And I know they're not open. Well, shoot. And so this is the first time I've actually ever been down here and I didn't realize that they had a, a memorial plaque in there for some of the fallen, uh, fallen rugby players who were, were soldiers here as well. Um, you know, so I haven't been in there. <clears throat> um, when it was the clubhouse across the street, spent a lot of time in there and we would host other teams, you know, would play. And so uh, the coach, who was the bank manager, he actually was one of the people that kind of really started the, the rugby union over here. And as the bases closed and teams fell apart, they had all this leftover memorabilia and he had it in the clubhouse there, which is now the one behind me, we just looked in the door. And it basically is like a museum of uh, US Army or even just US military rugby in Europe or specifically in Germany. And so when you walk in, it's kind of a uh, museum of, of you know bygone, bygone teams of the past who are no longer there and he has trophies and jerseys, and that guy has a story for every single piece of memorabilia, 
ugh, memorabilia hanging in there. It's insane the memory he has that it, he can, uh, you know, attaches to these, each, each little object he'll point out and just tell you this funny story about it. So uh, if you ever happen to find yourself here, especially if you're still in active duty or and you end up being on one of the rotational units that come through, there's not a whole lot to do out here, especially sports-wise, but they always try to get the rugby team going um, with the rotational units that go in so they can at least play some friendly games with some te teams around the area. So if you're sports inclined at all, please be sure to seek out the rugby team. And even if you're uh, not inclined, try to see if you can ever catch that uh, little rugby uh, um, clubhouse open. Like I said, it, it's, uh, it's worth looking at and it's definitely worth the stories. So we'll uh, continue to keep walking. Okay, so we are down a little further on the main street here. So th when I was here, this used to be, this was an outdoor, later, later on, not when I first got here, but later on, this was like an outdoor center. It was a wing of the PX, Outdoor World maybe. It's where they sold like all the camping, hiking, and stuff like that. TKS or T-Mobile, that's your local place where you can get on-base internet and uh, SIM cards and things for your phone. There used to also be, uh, I think it was a Harley Davidson dealership. Uh, it was a car rental place. In fact, the orange banner hanging out right here, it looks like sixth from a German six car rental. And then I'm not sure what else was here. There's the mail room, which actually is still open. So this is part of the Ansbach garrison. Illesheim Ansbach is part of the US AG, US Army garrison Ansbach. So they have a post office there. It's a town of about probably 15 or 20 minutes away. There is a post office there. And the post office here and there, they alternate. Like one is open Monday, Wednesday, Friday, the other Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, or something like that. Um, and here, oh, I, actually, you know what? It was here. So this was the bowling alley. Um, I think they have closed the bowling alley. I see the sign that says gaming room, uh, but I'm pretty sure it closed years ago. This is one of the few things there was to do for soldiers on base. <clears throat> so unfortunately, the rotating brigades coming through, there's not a whole lot of entertainment. Um, so this is, like I said, when I was here, this was a bowling alley. They had, uh, you know, a full kitchen in there as well. So at least it was something to do, but like a lot of things on this base, it's, uh, it's closed down as well. I have no idea what this building is used for. Years ago, I believe was this, this was the BOSS headquarters. Uh, BOSS stands for Better Opportunity for Single Soldiers. That's kind of a little uh, organization I have on most military bases and they put together like, you know, trips and just fun stuff to do for the, the single soldiers who aren't, you know, married with families, just kind of give them some stuff to do. Uh, especially overseas in Germany, they would, they would put together, you know, basically like field trips so you could get out and uh, kind of go see the things on Kind of, we say the economy, there's, when you're overseas on base, there's on base and then there's out like on the economy, basically out in town. So they would organize trips out in on the economy. They would take trips down, you know, ski trips and stuff in the winter, uh, put together fishing trips and expeditions and stuff like that, hikes. And so uh, this, is, uh, this is all closed down as well. And here's the old commissary, or for those of you who aren't military, this is a grocery store. And I can tell by the weeds growing up in front, this has been closed down for a while too. So it was down here was the uh, the old PX, the big base on base store, almost like your on base Walmart. And then here was your commissary, your on base grocery store, both closed down. So there's nothing really here to support the uh, current soldiers. And you know, I just told you the story about the boss building. Actually, now that I'm thinking this was the boss, the better opportunity for single soldiers. So I don't. Oh, yeah, I do. This was the CDC, the child daycare center. So this is where you know the, the young kids would come during the day, and they had all the specialists in there that would uh, they were preschool, basically it's your preschool uh, up before kindergarten. So uh, it's where the little kids would come and learn their fundamental skills, learn how to interact with others while uh, mom and dad were working during the day. So that's what that was. That was the CDC. We're gonna keep walking too far down. This was our old headquarter building here, <clears throat> um, the rotational brigades. I think they do still. I walked in here yesterday. They do still kind of set up their their staffs in there when they rotate through. Uh, for your military personnel, like their S1, S2, S3, S4, yada, yada, yada. Um, across the field, or across the street from there is one of the hangars, maintenance hangars. Um, this is the old boss building. This building right here was the old movie theater. And then, of course, this is one of the other hangars here. So, um, DOD policy, I cannot film um, the active runway, and I cannot film any of the aircraft that are coming through. So, so I know some of you <laughs> may, may want to see the, the Apache helicopters or the... Uh, anything else that they might have here, but I'm not allowed to film that stuff. Uh, so I think I'm gonna walk over and check out the old um, housing area and kind of see what kind of a ghost town that's become as well. The housing area had to make a, a side stop here. So here's the uh, front of the old theater, closed down. Saw quite a few movies in there. And then uh, we would always get together for, you know, like battalion wide briefings and stuff in there. We'd all pile in. So they'd give us our mandatory safety brief and mandatory classes we had to take. So uh, the sign, I don't know if you can tell, but the paint's kind of peeling off the sign and unfortunately it's kind of looks like it's in, in uh, disrepair as well. Back when I was stationed here from 2006, 
I got here, I think it was February, March 2006, and I left around October of 2009. <clears throat> and during that time, they had decided they were going to close this base. So they just cut funding to the base for a year. Then they realized, I don't know how they didn't realize this before, this base actually has an airfield, but it's a NATO airfield. So they couldn't close the base because of some agreement they have with NATO or something. So basically this base went without funding for a year while it was still a full-fledged active duty base. So that was, that, was pretty, uh, that was pretty bad. That was a pretty bad year for everything around here. And so uh, uh, they open it back up. They're using for rotational brigades, but a lot of this stuff is just closed. A lot of these buildings are empty. And I will talk a little bit more about that at the end of the video. So maybe maybe we haven't seen the uh, final chapter of Stork Barracks yet. So it's so funny that all these brown signs, usually they have like the name of the, the unit and stuff on them or what it is. And they all say rotational aviation forces instead of like, you know, the battalion name. So that's pretty much what this is used for. So they say this is the SSA, su uh, Supply Support Area. Uh, so supply support activity. However, this building when I was here was actually the dental clinic and spin around this way. So this is the hangar. I actually used to work in this hangar. This was a 66 cab, then later 2nd to 159th and I was in Charlie Company back. Well, started in Alpha, went to Delta and ended up in Charlie Company during my time here. You know, I almost completely forgot to mention it, but uh, on the back side of the base here and this is what, I don't know if this is what they consider the old power plant, but if you're ever stationary, the one thing you'll know is missing it's a big smokestack, the big red and white striped smokestack, it's gone. Um, it hadn't been in use for years, and I guess they were afraid it was going to fall down, it was starting to crumble, so they tore that down a few years ago, and I don't remember how many years exactly they tore it down, but I, mean, I remember it was kind of, a, kind of a big deal because that was one of the icons. You know, when you came on base, you always saw the, the red and white smokestack. Whether you actually paid attention to it or not, it was, it was pretty uh, obvious to tell where you were whenever you saw that. So when they tore that down, and I think it's set right here, um, like I said, it was, it was a pretty big deal. So I thought I'd better mention that before I forget. Oh, here's the Illisheim Chapel. It looks like they actually still maintain the grass around the chapel, even up close to the building. I don't see wild grass growing. However, I don't know if they actually still hold services there. I would hope they do for the rotational personnel, but they might not have anybody full-time dedicated you know, to, to services. And I'm not sure if the rotational personnel uh, units, when they come through, bring chaplains with them. Back through the, the officer's housing area now. You know, these little, uh, almost like duplexes here, 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 here. So that's pretty much where um, all the, uh, the the base staff, the officer, uh, officers who lived on base, that's was pretty much officer housing. Um, unfortunately, it is all empty now. You know, it doesn't look like it's in that bad of shape. So it looks like, you know, it could still be used for the future if they decide they wanted to do something like that. Oh, yeah, here's your U.S. Army Garrison Ansbach, your army home. So it back still uh, still in the officer's housing. I noticed this yesterday when I was driving through here. Uh, has all these little uh, yellow signs in the doors. See, they say out of order. So uh, yeah, kind of crappy to see all these you know nice nice houses they had for for on base personnel, and now they're they're not being used. Uh, we're actually walking over towards the like basically uh, junior enlisted uh, married housing area now. So uh, check that out. My last shot, the sun was behind me, so hopefully we got that. Uh, I'll turn here. I used to spend a little bit of time in this hangar here as well when I lived here. Why? Because this hangar was actually converted into the gym. It's a fitness center. Notice now you can register your, your military ID and you have 24 access into the gym as well. Walked in through there yesterday just to take a look at it. It's actually, uh, it's actually pretty nice inside there. Inside of one of the married housing units and I can see by in the windows here they're all it's all empty so they're not being used. <clears throat> I'd heard uh, a few years ago when I was here and they were still doing, it was active, it was, was changed from active duty post to the rotational forces, that they were actually um, using some of the married housing unit to uh, house some of the soldiers as well. They were putting them in like two family homes and stuff like that, like, you know, two or three soldiers would basically inhabit one apartment. So uh, they're not doing it in this building in particular, so I don't know if they're still doing that with some of the other ones or not. And then this is, this is part of the school system. Um, didn't have kids, so I can't tell you what grades they were. I don't know if these were like consolidated schools, you know, uh, elementary and then middle school, and then they did high school in, on the Ansbach base, or if maybe this was elementary and, oh, this per, oh, this is a youth services. Looks like a school. I don't know. I'm sure some of you who were stationed here, um, had kids, will probably watch the video. So uh, please let us all know what, what that is. It looks like a school. I just don't remember because I didn't have kids, I'm sorry. Okay, so um, once again, in one of my videos, you see me out walking across the, the field. So I actually spent a lot of time on this field 
This was the rugby pitch, the rugby field that uh, hosts the black and blue when I was here. You can see the uh, uh, goal posts are still up. They modified them, modified them to be able to uh, bolt in those soccer nets in case you want to use a field to play soccer instead of rugby, but God only knows why you'd want to use a perfectly good field to play a stupid game like soccer. So I spent many Saturdays out here. It's funny, you still see the chalk lines. <clears throat> I think this sign has maybe seen better days as well. And you got like, you know, on, on this uh, fence row here, you've got this random ladder. Well, we had to have this ladder here because whenever we kicked the ball over the fence during play, we had no way to get over and get it. So we had to have that ladder installed so we could have, be able to access the uh, balls as they were kicked out of bounce. So <clears throat> a little shed off to the side over here is where we kept all the club equipment in there. Uh, you know, pads for the goalposts, tackling dummies for training and all this good stuff. Used to host tournaments out here uh, almost every Saturday. It seems like I was either on this field or I was on another field. Uh, a yeah, good, good group of guys had some really good times here. And uh, now it's just all like everything else on this base, not being used. And off the pitch, I'll say one last thing. It's kind of strange because I don't know the last time they played a game here because I thought the team had kind of been defunct for a while. But looking at these chalk lines, the way they're drawn, so this is your, this is your 22 meter line. So this is still lined for rugby, not for soccer. So kind of strange. Oh, there's our old uh, scrum machine. Okay, I gotta walk over here and take a look at this before I move on. Let's get there. Still got the signs up. Rugby team storage. <clears throat> so this was uh, oh, signs on, on all three of these for rugby team storage. Didn't realize we had all this. So this is the old scrum sled. So we used uh, to practice for the scrum. You put uh, you know put your pack on one side and put your resistance on the other side. You drive this thing and drive this thing and drive this thing and work on drills. Build up your legs. Good stuff. What's funny is it really looks like it's falling apart and rusty. It actually kind of looked like that back in the day. So that, that part hasn't changed. So it's good to see you, old buddy. Spent many times pounding you around. Walking off the field, back down <clears throat> through the housing area. So as I said before, a lot of this stuff looks like it's not being used at all. However, I see cars at the end here. So maybe they are uh, using some of this still. We are back here at the Longbow Lounge. <clears throat> so this was pretty much like the on-base bar or pub or community club. Uh, this also, as you can see, fell victim to the closers. So this wasn't a fully functioning pub by the time I got here. Um, we pretty much used this for like uh, special events. You know, I remember they would usually host the non-commissioned officer induction ceremonies. They'd have like the after parties in here and stuff as well. Um, one year as the rugby team, as we hosted the B Bavarian Tens tournament, we had all the other teams in Bavaria come here and we rented this out and used this for our, our after party as well karaoke, uh, barbecue, well that went on until two or three in the morning. That, that, was, a, uh, that was a good time. <clears throat> but uh, usually when I came in here, the pubs, you know, they had the old Steins hung up. You know, if you're a regular in here, you could put your name on them. A lot of old pictures from uh, people who were stationed here in years gone past. And so there was a lot of history up on the walls in there. So it's kind of, kind of sad to see something, you know, like this close as well. Come back through the family housing area to get uh, back over to the main part of post where my car is. So this is a big traffic circle here. And as you can see, it has the uh, buildings off the side of the traffic circle with a massive playground in the middle. So I will say the kids had one impressive playground when they were here. Uh, <clears throat> it's kind of sad to see because this used to be, you know, every night this whole place was full. Families were out barbecuing and stuff. They had barbecue pits set up. Uh, kids were out on the playground. Neighbors out talking. So definitely looks like a ghost town now. So uh, walking through here, you wouldn't even realize there were still people actually on the base. This is actually the old elementary school. In fact, yep, even there's a sign. So back to the youth services, I'm not sure what those buildings were back before we got to the rugby field. I thought they were schools. This time, elementary school. <clears throat> Let's say we look over on the side here. This was, I forget, oh. Uh, so if you drive around, you drive in a parking lot over there. This building here was uh, like an auto skill center. You could go in there and you could, you know, rent out a bay for five or six dollars an hour with a lift and all the tools, and you could work on your own vehicle over there as well. I think that's also where they had the uh, POV personally owned vehicle inspection point. You have to go in and get your annual inspection before you register, you know, your vehicle for your license. This is the old Stork Barracks. This is the old, uh, um, oh, what do they call it? It says aid station, but TMC, Troop Military, uh, Troop Medical Facility. Basically, it's a clinic. So it's still kind of being used. But one of the things that's still open is the shopette, although it kind of has truncated hours. Um, I actually came here yesterday and drove across base and walked in there to get something to drink. And when I walked in, there was a gentleman working in there that I, I used to know when I was stationed here, and I don't want to name drop, but uh, I walked in and he looked up and said, what in the hell are you doing here? 
Anyway, so you're the last person I expected to walk through the door. So it has been, uh, it has been kind of nice. I've gotten to see uh, three or four people that actually, you know, were, was uh, stationed here with back years ago. Uh, some people are still in the military up in Ansbach. Uh, a couple of the guys who were junior underneath me, uh, now they've switched over to officers and they're Apache pilots and things like that. So it was actually pretty nice to get to see some of these guys uh, that I hadn't seen for years. And now, so kind of like being back here, they're in Ansbach, but they said they'd actually rather be kind of back here on Stork Barracks just because of, you know, nostalgic purposes. Plus, you kind of get emotionally attached to these places when you, you know, spend uh, three or four years of your life in one of these places. Now, I haven't been stationed here since 20, 2009, and, you know, here it is 14 years later, and I'm back here doing a video. So, uh, yeah, strange, strange thing about us Army and ex-Army personnel, right? Well, there's not a whole lot left to do on the base for the, uh, you know, the youth that are stationed here. Right outside of base, if you walk just down, down the street a little bit, there is a train station, Illisheim train station. <clears throat> so you can take that train into the next little town over by Vinsheim, and that train actually goes all the way into uh, Nuremberg. So it's not like, uh, you know, soldiers are completely trapped here, because uh, most of them that come over rotation don't have cars, don't have a driver's license for over here anyway. Um, I was fortunate enough to, when I lived here, had a car, so I drove actually all over Europe. But just... Just know, <laughs> they still have ways to get off base and they have a chance to get out and see some things. Now, whether they have, should have the time to do it, I'm not sure. So, getting ready to wrap this video up, I want to talk about the housing a little bit more. Uh, these used to be soldier barracks. These were all soldier barracks. These were all soldier barracks. I don't know if they're being used at all. Um, if you're ever stationed here, the barracks on the other side of the airfield, the, the bigger barracks, I think that's where they're housing most of the people now. I do see a door open here, but when I drove by, I didn't really see anything inside. And none of these have blinds on the rooms, and I can't see anything in the room, so I'm pretty sure they're probably not being used. So that's kind of the uh, that's kind of the state of Stork Barracks today. <clears throat> you know, far cry from what it used to be. Uh, like I said, when I was here, it was Apache battalions. Uh, when I was here, I heard stories that back in the mid and late '80s, they actually had armor. They had tanks here, and so there's there's kind of been a uh, transition on what types of units came through uh, these bases and, and what were stationed, you know, with those units at the time. So if you're watching this video, if you were ever stationed here. Chances are they could, it, the base could have looked a lot different and been have been used had been used for different purposes back then, uh, based on the type of equipment the units that were stationed here have. Uh, so, big question is: Have we seen the end of Stork Barracks? I don't know. Um, yesterday and today, I've been hearing rumors that they are actually talking about reopening this as an active duty base. So, you know, a lot of the housing and stuff is is uh, basically mothballed, but it's actually still in pretty decent shape. They still take care of the yards. It wouldn't take a whole lot of maintenance to, to you know, revamp or refurbish those living quarters and school facilities and things like that. So, you know, I've been hearing for a few years that they were talking about reopening this, but everybody here that's active duty that I talked to said that if they've been hearing lately, there's been a lot of talk about it. So, who knows? Maybe we haven't seen the end of Stork Barracks. Maybe that uh, last chapter hasn't been written, and maybe you never know. Maybe it's destined for greatness. It's going to, you know, maybe be a, uh, a uh, reflective image of, of what it used to look like in years past. So, if you were stationed there, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I certainly enjoy being back here whenever I can, seeing some old friends and just kind of walking down memory lane and, you know, getting to be a little nostalgic. So, uh, that's it. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. As always, thanks for watching. See you soon.